Let's go over notes for chapter 3.1. Uh, these are notes on uh, absolute extrema and critical points. So extrema is simply max and mins of a, of a graph. Uh, so here we have a relative maximum, a relative minimum, and a relative maximum here. Uh, basically, any <coughs> uh, hills and valleys will be considered a relative or a local extrema. Uh, and we call it a relative or local maximum at this point because um, this point, this maximum, uh, it's relative, uh, um, this point is going to be maximum relative to the immediate points to the left and to the right of the graph. And this is a relative minimum because it, um, compared to the point immediately to the left and to the right, it is lower than, uh, than those points. So an uh, easy way to spot a uh, relative or, uh, or local max or min is simply to uh, visually see if it's a hill or valley. If it's a hill or valley of a graph, then we know it's going to be a relative max or relative min. Uh, but this point is a, a relative maximum because it's a hill, but it's also the absolute maximum because it is the highest point um, uh, throughout the entire graph. Okay. Uh, in this case, we don't have an absolute minimum because uh, there is no physical, uh, because this graph will go to negative infinity, uh, there's no uh, physical um, uh, point that we can uh, direct to where uh, we're going to get an absolute minimum uh, point. All right, on a closed interval, uh, here we have a relative minimum and absolute minimum. So first off, uh, relative minimum because it's a valley of a graph. Absolute minimum because it is the lowest point uh, throughout this entire closed interval graph. Uh, this is an absolute maximum uh, because it's the highest point on the graph, but we can't consider this a relative maximum because this point um, um, is not a hill, right? There's nothing to the right of it. Uh, so we cannot consider this a relative maximum. All right. Now, on an open interval, um, uh, here we still have a relative or local uh, minimum and absolute minimum, but in this case, we don't have a um, uh, we don't have an absolute maximum because we have, we have an open circle there. So, if you see this, uh, with an open circle, um, there's uh, if we choose any point close to this open circle, we can always close a, choose a point that is closer. So we cannot locate a, uh, a physical um, point that will direct us to absolute maximum. So uh, if we have an open circle um, at that potential maximum, then we cannot consider that as a maximum. Okay, so again, absolute extrema is the highest or lowest point on the entire graph. Holes and plus or minus infinity cannot be considered as an absolute extrema. Okay, so this moves on to um, extreme value theorem or EVT. So extreme value theorem says if a function is continuous on the closed interval, so continuous, knows no breaks in the graph, on the closed interval the endpoints are defined, then it has both an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum on that interval. Okay, Fermat's theorem says if a function is continuous on a closed interval, then the absolute extrema um, will be either at the critical number or at an endpoint. So if we were to consider a graph, uh, then the only potential candidates for absolute max or absolute min would have to be either at the endpoints or at the critical points, and critical points are going to be uh, found from the derivative. If we set the derivative equal to zero, we can find out where the slope is zero. And also, if we set uh, the denominator of the derivative equal to zero, we can also find out where the slope does not exist. And where the slope does not exist, so for instance, this sharp point here is also going to be a potential candidate for an, abs for an absolute max or an absolute minimum. So critical numbers are x values in the domain of the function where the derivative of a function is either zero, so numerator of the derivative equal to zero, or undefined, setting the denominator of the derivative equal to zero. 
Uh, relative extrema only occurs at critical numbers, but not all critical numbers are where relative extrema occurs. Uh, and this can be seen if we have a graph that looks like this. Here we have a point where the slope is zero, but this point is neither a hill or valley of the graph. So even though we do consider this as a candidate uh, to test to see whether that's a relative max or relative min or absolute max or absolute min, um, uh, we know that uh, th this value will not produce a relative max or relative min. All right, and then another um, something to be concerned about is that the, the maximum and the minimum values refer to the y values of the point. So if we want to, so the, if the problem is asking for what is the maximum value um, of the graph, then it's asking for the y value. And you wish that it would be more specific, but just so you know, if you see minimum value or maximum value, it is implied that they're talking about the y value at that point. All right, so here are the steps that we'll be taking to apply extreme value theorem. Um, we want to be able to test all of the candidates, all the x value candidates in the graph, so that, and plug into the graph so that we can determine whether, um, whether there is a maximum or a minimum, whether we have a, uh, what, so that we can find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the graph. So first thing we do is we find critical numbers, critical points, we find the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and if there is a denominator of the derivative, and there's a variable in that denominator, we also set that portion equal to zero. Because where there's a sharp point or where the graph, where the derivative is undefined, you know, that's also a potential um, maximum or minimum. Okay, next thing we do is we plug all the critical points and endpoints into the function. We want to plug all of the candidates. These are all the potential candidates for the highest and lowest points of the graph. Okay, and then last thing, we compare the y values to determine the absolute max and absolute minimum. Uh, there's a step that I left off, and that very first step should be uh, test um, if the function is continuous. Okay, but not only continuous, but it has to be continuous on the closed interval. All right, now it's possible that there may be a vertical asymptote in the graph or there's a break in the graph, but as long as um, what's between the closed interval is continuous, then extreme value theorem will check out and we will be able to continue with the problem. Um, so even though there is a vertical asymptote in the graph, we still want to test and see is it going to affect our closed interval. Okay, if it doesn't affect the closed interval, then we can continue with extreme value theorem. Okay, so let's look at example one. Find all the critical numbers for each, uh, then what values will give us the absolute extrema. So we know we already have endpoints that we need to test. These are already going to be candidates for absolute max and absolute min. So our function is 3x to the 4th minus 4x to the cube. Uh, we know that this is a polynomial function, so a polynomial is going to be continuous on the closed interval. So we can just state that our function okay, is continuous on the closed interval. And then next, we, uh, we have our endpoints as candidates, but we also need to find critical points. So we find the derivative. Uh, 12x cubed minus 12x squared using um, power rule. Factor out the 12x and we get x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now 0 is already a repeat of our endpoint so we only need to consider 1. So we have 0, 2, and 1 are the, um, the, the candidates for our max and mins. So then we one at a time plug 0, 1, and 2 back into the original function because we want to find out the physical um, y value the location of the y value of that function. So if I plug 0 into the function, I get 0. If I plug 1 into the function, I get negative 1. If I plug 2 into this function, I'll get 16. Um, so we have, uh, if we compare these three y values, the largest y value is 16. The 
lowest y value is negative 1, so we have our absolute max being 16 and absolute min being negative 1, um, and these are going to be uh, guaranteed because we have a closed interval, and these are the only potential points that could be absolute max, absolute min. So to be more um, uh, to be more specific or to be a little bit more clear, we can say that the absolute minimum is negative 1 at x equals 1. Okay. And here we can say the absolute max is 16, right? The absolute min, absolute max are all uh, this referring to the y value, okay, at x equals 2. Right, let's look at example two. We have our function, we have our endpoints, um, and if we look, if we think about this function here, between these endpoints, there's not going to be uh, anything that will cause this to be undefined. So we know our function is continuous on the closed interval from negative one to zero. So we have our endpoints. We need to see if we have any critical points that we can that we may need to test as well. So we go through our derivative process. We go through chain rule. We bring down the two-thirds, keep the parentheses, subtract one from the exponent, multiply by the inside function's derivative, and then we have two over three times x minus one to the one-third. Critical points can come from numerator or the denominator, but from the numerator, we only have a, a um, uh, uh, we only have a constant, so there's not going to be any um, critical points here. Denominator, uh, we have a variable, so we set that equal to zero. Uh, if we set equal to 0, divide by 3, cube both sides, we get x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. So we have a critical point at 1. Um, however, we have to check to see, does our critical point lie between our uh, endpoints? And we see that 1 is outside of the interval, so we don't, um, we are not going to be testing x equals 1. So really, there's no critical point uh, that we need to test, only the endpoints. So plug negative 1 into the original function, we get cube root of 4. Plug 0 into the original function, we get 1. So cube root of 4 is larger uh, than 1. So we can say the absolute maximum is cube root of 4 at x equals negative 1. The absolute minimum is with a y value of 1 at the location x equals 0. All right, example 3. We have our function, we have our uh, closed interval, and again, we can say that our function is continuous on the interval from 0 to 3, uh, because um, uh, here the only values that will be undefined will be values less than um, or greater than 3. And in this case, 0 and 3, uh, we're okay here, so we can state that our function is continuous on the closed interval. Okay, so extreme value theorem will apply. Um, Next step, we find the derivative, and we want to get it set up. So square root of 3 minus x can be rewritten as 3 minus x to the 1 half. Now notice um, we have a function that involves two separate, uh, two separate um, terms, uh, expressions. We have 4 thirds x, that's 1. 3 minus x to the 1 half, that's no another one. They're being multiplied together, so we have to go through product rule. So product rule says f prime, f prime g plus f times g prime. So g prime requires chain rule. We bring down the 1 half, keep the parentheses, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then multiply by the inside function's derivative. 3 goes to 0, negative x goes to negative 1, and then now we can clean this up a bit. So 4 root 3 minus x over 3 minus uh, the 4 and 2 can reduce to be 2. The negative 1 comes out in front. The x stays up top. The square root of 3 minus x goes to the denominator along with the 3. Okay, so we want, if we want to find critical points, we, we need to get this as uh, one fraction, uh, as finding common denominator. So common denominator will be 3 times three minus, root 3 minus x. We need to balance the numerator here. So 4 times uh, 3 minus x, root 3 minus x times three, root 3 minus x gives us 3 minus x. Minus 2x, this simplifies to be 12 minus 6x, which is... Uh, all over 3 root 3 minus x. Okay, now we need to consider our critical point from numerator and from denominator. Set the numerator equal to 0. We get 12 minus 6x equals 0. 6x equals 12. x equals 2. Set the denominator equal to 0. And we get 3 root 3 minus x is 0. So x equals 3. We have critical points at 2 and 3. 3 is at the end point, so that's a duplicate. We don't need to test that twice. 
So we need to test 0, 2, and 3. Okay, if I plug 0, I get 0. If I plug 3 in, I get uh, 0. If I plug 2, I get 4 thirds 2 times root 1. So now, if we compare these values, we see 8 thirds, the largest value, so that's the absolute max. 0 is the smallest value, so absolute min. So uh, to be more specific, we can say absolute minimum is 0 at x equals 0 and 3. And the absolute max is 8 thirds at x equals 2.